Welcome back to another episode of Random Math Stuff, and for today's video I have one of my favorite puzzles along with two really clever solutions. Here we go! Let's say you have an L-shaped room that looks kind of like a decapitated Tetris piece, and you place two people inside at random locations. What is the probability that they can see each other? To be more rigorous, if you pick two random points inside this shape, what is the probability that the line segment between those two points is completely within the shape? So this counts as entirely within the shape, but this does not. The line of sight between two people is blocked by the wall here. So yeah, this puzzle has two solutions, the first one of which is more practical, while the second one of which is what you clicked on the video for, higher dimensions, which is always interesting to see. By the way, as I'm going through the solution, you can at any point pause and try to solve the rest yourself, using what you've already seen as a hint. Okay, after experimenting a little bit, you can tell that these two walls right here are the problem. The only time sight is blocked is when one person is over here, the other person is over here, and these two walls end up in the middle. Also, we've noticed that if the two people are closer to one another, they have a much higher chance of being able to see each other. But this doesn't really give us much to work with, back to more experimenting. By the way, neither of the two solutions involve calculus, which I know some of you are thinking of. You can solve the puzzle with calculus, but I discourage it because it's not as satisfying. Alright, what progress have we made? We've split up the shape into three squares, and we've realized that if two people are in the same square, they can definitely see each other. Furthermore, if two people are in adjacent squares, they can also definitely see each other. So, the only scenario where the two people can't see each other is when one person's in this square and the other person's in this square. If you do the math, you'll find that this has a 2 over 9 chance of happening. But you'll notice that sometimes, each person is in their respective squares, but they can still see each other. So the answer isn't just 7 over 9. We need to figure out what's going on here, when can they see each other and when can they not. But our problem is simpler now. We just need to figure out, if person A is in this square and person B is in this square, what's the probability that they can see each other? And here we have the actually clever part of the solution. Let's create a phantom square, whatever you want to call it. Let's color it in with gray, and keep in mind you can see through this square. On the other hand, you cannot see through this square. This square is solid wall. And you might notice that the line segment must go through either the gray square or the wall square. It can't go through both, it's always one or the other. And you'll also notice that these two squares are symmetric to one another. This is easier to see if you rotate the diagram. And symmetry means the probability is also symmetric, they're the same. So the 2 over 9 chance from earlier is split in half. 1 in 9 chance of going through gray square, and 1 in 9 chance of going through wall square. And we also know from earlier that only these two walls can block visibility. In other words, visibility is only blocked if the line goes through the wall square. So we're done. Since we have a 1 in 9 chance of not being able to see, the answer is just 8 over 9. So yeah, that's solution 1. We first found that this scenario had a 2 over 9 chance of happening, then we found that when this scenario happened, there was a 50-50 chance of being able to see, not being able to see. So we found that there was a 1 in 9 chance of not being able to see, and we just subtracted it from 1 to get 8 over 9. So yeah, hope you found that interesting. Now let's try to find solution 2. The strategy behind solution 2 is not really the same as solution 1, so you'll need to start over from the beginning and find something else. So, let's experiment. Our new strategy is this. We pick a random location for person 1 first. Then we ask ourselves, what portion of the shape's area is visible to person 1? For example, if we pick this location, person 2 can be literally anywhere and person 1 will still be able to see them. And if person 1 can see person 2, well then they can see each other. So if person 1 is randomly chosen to be here, the probability of visibility is 100%. On the other hand, if person 1 is in this corner over here, they can only see about two-thirds of the shape's area. So person 2 has a 2 in 3 chance of being in person 1's visibility. So if person 1's random location is here, the probability of visibility is two-thirds. Now theoretically, you could find the visibility probability for every point, everywhere in this shape. And since person 1's random location will be a random point chosen out of all of these, you could just average up all the numbers to find the average probability of visibility. This would be your answer, because that's what the puzzle is looking for. What's the probability of visibility? Now you could do this with calculus, take a double integral, but here's a more interesting way to go about this. We're going to add in the third dimension. Let's make a solid shape. The room itself will be the base of the shape, but the height of the shape will vary from point to point. It will be equal to the visibility probability of that point. So the solid would have height 1 over here, but height 2 thirds at this corner. And you would fill in the rest of the shape as well. Now volume is equal to base times average height. And we know the area of the base, it's 3. So if we find the volume of our solid shape, we can find the average height. And remember, the height is just a visibility probability, so average height is exactly what we're looking for. Average visibility probability. Okay, so how do we find the volume? If you look more closely at our shape, you'll realize that it is a weird shape. 
It's basically composed of three parts, each corresponding to one of the three squares from solution 1. The middle part is nice, it's just a cube. Which makes sense, because every point within the square has visibility probability 1, you can see the whole room, and therefore the height is always 1, and you get a cube. But these other two parts are really strange. They have a spiral staircase kind of structure that I don't know how to properly draw. We need a way to calculate the volume of these two parts, but we have no idea how. So now let me show you a 2D analogy. Suppose we want to find the area of this piece of paper right here. If you haven't noticed, this is kind of like the 2D version of this. There are three parts, the middle part is a square, and for the sake of the analogy, we'll say we have no idea how to find the area of these two parts. The area of the square is easy, it's just one, but what do we do with these two parts? Hmm. Two videos ago we had a similar scenario, where we wanted to find the combined area of these two shapes. And what we did was rotate one of them, and it ended up forming a nice rectangle with the other piece. And so the combined area was simply 4 times 5. Can we do the same thing here? No, we can't. They don't fit together when rotated in two dimensions. But the answer is obvious to you. These are just two pieces of paper. We can pick one up, rotate it in 3D, and put it back down and now we have a rectangle. Similarly, we can take this part, rotate it in the fourth dimension, and it will fit perfectly with the other part, leaving no gaps and you will end up with a square prism with height 5 over 3. You might have some questions. How do we know that it'll fit together perfectly? If you have that question, I think it's probably my fault because this shape is really hard to draw and I can't get it right. This also takes some 3D visualization to pull off, which is why I said the first solution was much more practical. Another question, how do you know that the height is 5 over 3? Well, if you look at this part of the shape, the height of one part is 1, and the height of the other part is 2 over 3, so that's how we know. Anyway, we can find the volume of the square prism pretty easily, it's just base times height. Adding this to the volume of the cube, we get 8 over 3, and now we go back to this formula. Average height is volume divided by base, so we get the answer to be 8 over 9. Now, is that a good solution? No, it's horrible. But I never promised a good solution, I just said that it would be interesting. And I guess we didn't really use the fourth dimension that much, but whatever. By the way, if you haven't seen my community post, I will now be uploading longer videos once a week on Sunday. Today's is just pretty short because I fell in a rabbit hole. Anyway, that's all I have for you today, and I'll see you in a week. Peace.